Good afternoon. Today is the 17th of February, 2021, and this is Black History Month. I've been spending the month focusing in on the Equal Justice Initiative. But today I'm going to take a sidetrack and celebrate the what would have been the 79th birthday of Huey P. Newton. Huey P. Newton uh, died um, in, uh, I think, 1989, they said. He died uh, because of his addiction to drugs. But in reality, America killed Huey P. Newton as it killed so many of our other black leaders who who took the who 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 had the nerve to resist the imperialism and the oppression of black America. The black masses uh what is what Huey was concerned about, uplifting the masses. I'm going to give a speech that Huey gave in 1967. I'm going to read it, The Correct Handling of a Revolution by Huey P. Newton. What follows is Huey's words. The black masses are handling their resistance incorrectly. When the brothers in East Oakland have been learned their resistance fighting from Watts Massed the people in the streets and threw bricks and Molotov cocktails to destroy property and create disruption. They were herded into a small area by the Gestapo police and immediately contained by the brutal violence of the oppressors' stormtroops. Although this matter of resistance is sporadic, short lived, and costly, it has been transmitted across the country to all the ghettos of the black nation. The identity of the first man who threw a Molotov cocktail is not known by the masses, yet they respect and imitate his actions. In the same way, the actions of the party will be uh, in, uh, imitated by the people if the people respect these activities. The primary job of the party is to provide leadership for the people. We must teach by word and action the correct strategic methods of prolonged resistance. When the people learn that it is no longer advantageous for them to resist by going into the streets in large numbers, and when they see the advantage in the activities of the guerrilla warfare method, they will quickly follow this example. But first, they must respect the party which is transmitting this message. When the vanguard group destroys the machinery of the oppressor, by dealing with him in small groups in three and four and then escapes the might of the oppressor, the masses will be impressed and more likely to adhere to this correct strategy. When the masses hear a Gestapo policeman has been executed while sipping coffee at a counter and the revolutionary executors fled without being traced, the masses will see the validity of this kind of resistance. It is not necessary to organize 30 million black people in primary groups of twos and threes, but it is important for the party to show the people how to stage a revolution. There are three ways one can learn through study, observation, and experience. Since the black community is composed basically of activists, observation of or participation in activity are the principal ways the community learns. To learn is to learn by studying is good, but to learn by experience is better. Because the black community is not a reading community, it is very important that the Vanguard group be essentially activists. Without this knowledge of the black community, a black revolution and racist America is impossible. The main function of a party is to awaken the people and teach them the strategic method of resisting a power structure which is prepared not only to combat with massive brutality the people's resistance, but to annihilate totally the black population. 
if it is learned by the power structure that black people have X number of guns in their possession, that information will not stimulate the power structure to prepare itself with guns. It is already prepared. The end result of this revolutionary education will be positive for black people in their resistance and negative for the power structure in its oppression because the party always exemplifies revolutionary defiance. If the party does not make the people aware of the tools and methods of liberation, there will be no means by which the people can mobilize. The relationship between the Vanguard Party and the masses is a secondary relationship. The relationship among the members of the Vanguard Party is a primary relationship. If the, if the party machinery is to be effective, it is important that the members of the party maintain a face to face relationship with each other. It is impossible to put together functionary party machinery or programs without this direct relationship. To minimize the danger of Uncle Tom informers and opportunists, the members of the Vanguard Party should be tested revolutionaries. The main purpose of the Vanguard group should be to raise the consciousness of the masses through educational programs and other activities. The sleeping masses must be bombarded with the correct approach to struggle and the party must use all means available to get this information across to the masses. In order to do so, the masses must know that the party exists. A vanguard party is never underground in the beginning of its existence that would limit its effectiveness in educational goals. How can you teach people if the people do not know and respect you? The party must exist above ground as long as the dog power structure will allow, will allow and hopefully when the party is forced to go underground, the, the party's message will already have been put across to the people. The Vanguard Party's activities on the surface will necessarily be short-lived. Thus, the party must make a tremendous impact upon the people before it is driven into secrecy. By the time the people will, will know the party exists and will seek further information about its activities if it is driven underground. Many would-be revolutionaries work under the fallacious or the facetious notion that the Vanguard Party should be a secret organization which the power structure knows nothing about and that the masses know nothing about except for the occasional letter that comes to their homes at night. Underground parties cannot distribute leaflets announcing an underground meeting. Such contradictions and inconsistencies are not recognized by these so-called revolutionaries. They are, in fact, afraid of the very danger that they are asking people to confront. These so-called revolutionaries want the people to say what, what they themselves are afraid to say, to do what they themselves are afraid to do, that kind of revolutionary is a coward and a hypocrite. A true revolutionary realizes that if he is, if he is sincere, death is imminent. The things he is saying and doing are extremely dangerous. Without this realization, it is pointless to proceed as a revolutionary. If these imposters would investigate the history of revolution, they would see that the vanguard group always starts above ground and is driven underground by the aggressor. The Cuban Revolution is an example. When Fidel Castro started to resist the butcher Batista and the American running dogs, he began by speaking publicly on the University of Havana campus. He was later driven to the hills. His impact upon the dispossessed people of Cuba was tremendous and his teachings were received with much respect. When Castro went into hiding, the Cuban people searched him out, going to the hills to find him and his band of 12. Castro handled the revolutionary struggle correctly and if the Chinese revolution is investigated, it will be seen that the Communist Party operated quite openly in order to muster support from the masses. There are many more examples of successful revolutionary struggle from which one can learn the correct approach. 
the revolution in Kenya, the Algerian revolution discussed in Fanon's The Wretched of the Earth and the Russian Revolution, the works of Chairman Mao Zedong, and a host of others. Millions and millions of oppressed people may not know the members of the Vanguard Party personally, but they will learn of its activities and its proper strategy for liberation through an indirect acquaintance provided by the mass media. But it is not enough to rely on the media of the power structure. It is of prime importance that the Vanguard Party develop its own communications organ, such as a newspaper, and at the same time provide strategic revolutionary art and the destruction of the oppressor's machinery. For example, in Watts, California, the economy and property of the oppressor was destroyed to such an extent that no matter how the oppressor tried in his press to whitewash the activities of the Black Brothers, the real nature and cause of the activity was communicated to every community. And no matter how the oppressor tried in his own media to distort and confuse the message of Brother Stokely Carmichael, black people all over the country understood it perfectly and welcomed it. The Black Panther Party for Self-Defense teaches that in the final analysis, the Guns, hand grenades, bazookas, and other equipment necessary for defense must be supplied by the power structure. As exemplified by the Viet Cong, these weapons must be taken from the oppressor. Therefore, the greater the military preparation on the part of the oppressor, the greater the availability of weapons for the black community. It is believed by some hypocrites that when the people are taught by the vanguard group to prepare for resistance. This only brings a man down on them with increasing violence and brutality. But the fact is that when, a, when the man becomes more oppressive, he only heightens the revolutionary fervor. So if things get worse for the oppressed people, they will feel the need for revolution and resistance. You see, the people make revolution. The oppressors by their brutal actions cause resistance by the people. The Vanguard Party only teaches the correct methods of resistance. The complaint of the hypocrites that the Black Panther Party for self-defense is exposing the people to deeper suffering is an incorrect observation. By their rebellions in the black communities across the country, the people have proved that they will not tolerate any more oppressing by the racist dog police. They are looking now for guidance and to extend and strengthen their resistance struggle. The Vanguard Party exemplifies the characteristics that make them worthy of leadership. And of course, this, was, this, spe this speech was given in 1967 and within five years, the FBI and the Justice Department and uh, federal government, CIA, Army Intelligence Group, state and local governments had destroyed the Black Panther Party for self-defense because the Black Panther Party for self-defense and Huey P. Newton spoke to, uh, spoke directly to the people about the power that they were facing in the oppressor. This is a black man's salute to Black History Week and celebrating the 79th birthday of Huey P. Newton.